Part four, chapter eight of Short History of the Christian Church by John Fletcher Hurst. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter eight, English Deism. Early traces of unbelief in England can be found as far back as the beginning of the thirteenth century. When the Middle Ages came to a close, there was a strong sympathy with the free thinking of Italy. The humanism which was patronized cordially by the Medici of Florence and by the papacy, and which elevated the masterpieces of Greek and Roman literature above the scriptures and theological writings, found its strong supporters on the banks of the Thames. Cambridge and Oxford were busily engaged in utilizing the results of the new Italian love for classical learning. When the Reformation came, all other interests fell into the background the people divided into two great bodies the new protestant church of england and the old roman catholic church then the protestant dropped into two great divisions the independents or nonconformists and the conforming church of england when these adjustments had taken place the great bodies began to move on in a regular career the new philosophy of bacon and locke while abounding in practical strength was not without injurious effect upon evangelical christianity it was without proper safeguards otherwise it might have become a tower of strength to christianity it gave great prominence to nature and to natural laws and allowed too small a place for the operation of the divine by his doctrine of ideas and by the absence of spiritual elements in his philosophy locke though himself an earnest christian stimulated the sceptical reasoning of voltaire and condillac and is charged by some with being both logically and historically the forerunner of hume english deism was characterized by an absence of mystical and speculative elements god was recognized as existing but not imminent in nature and government the following was its creed so far as it had one when the natural order of the universe was first established everything was in force which was necessary for human development christianity is not at all a necessity all the good which we find to obtain in christianity existed originally it is only a republication of the first order revelation is not only not a divine thing but is positively superfluous there is no such thing as a recreation of the moral nature of man his highest development is the result of the happy growth of his native forces the deistical writers were a remarkable group they were distinguished for rich talents wide and varied learning and for a large measure of moral earnestness the first of the group lord herbert of cherbury was a devout and earnest christian he claimed to have received a special divine communication authorizing him to publish his plea for a deistical faith with herbert however we find the last trace of an intense spiritual element in english deism not one of the entire group was of that satirical and flippant spirit for which the french school beginning with voltaire was distinguished the period of deism extended from the middle of the seventeenth century to the last quarter of the eighteenth after herbert came successively blount shaftesbury collins mandeville woolston tyndall morgan chubb bolingbroke hume and gibbon of all the deists hume exerted perhaps the most pernicious influence in his essays he made miracles the object of his special attack his history of england which as he had prophesied was read like the newspapers gave him a wide celebrity and created a broad field for his opinions on miracles many of the writings of the deists were translated into the continental languages and circulated widely they were cordially welcomed in germany where owing to the general religious decline there was an atmosphere ready for their reception the english deists on this new field exerted a great influence in preparing the way for the reign of rationalism between the deists of england 
and their brethren in france there was a profound sympathy much of the material which had been published by the english writers had been borrowed from the french but had undergone a process of filtration by passing through the serious english nature the evangelical opposition was by no means wanting there was an array of deistical learning a persistence in the methods of attack and a sanction of the aristocracy of the country which gave to the new movement a remarkable degree of strength and success so soon however as the evangelical mind of england awoke to the danger of this new foe it adopted measures of defence deism was attacked on every side the work of evangelical resistance had to be shaped according to the assault where the gospels were assailed their inspired origin was urged and proved where hume endeavoured to pull down the fabric of miracle paley in his evidences seventeen ninety four strove to furnish a new support baxter boyle sherlock leland warburton and lardner may be regarded as representative writers in reply to the deists the most powerful argument however and the one against which the deists never rallied was butler's analogy of natural and revealed religion seventeen thirty six the new wesleyan movement lying in the twofold department of practical life and theological discussion excited a strong influence towards the final arrest of deism the masses had become thoroughly saturated with the unbelief which constantly grew grosser and more after the french type the preaching of the wesleys whitefield and their adherents reached the popular mind and proved a powerful factor in leading it back to a taste for spiritual life the north american colonies very promptly responded to all the intellectual movements of france and england the deists had their sympathizing friends in the new land many of their works were promptly republished in the obscure towns of the colonies and awakened an interest in the subject if they did not win adherence tom paine gained a wide popularity by his tracts in behalf of the independence of the colonies he was a deist but reflected rather the coarse and bald french infidelity than the circumspect and learned deism of england End of chapter eight